So I'm going to be sharing results of a nationwide survey that was conducted earlier this year by a group of um, collaborators here at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, um, Iowa State University, and University of Minnesota. And we're working together on a project funded by NC SARE. And uh, part of the project is just to understand the, the benefits and barriers that are um, viewed by consultants and, and farmers alike um, when it comes to using manure in, in cropping systems. So as Dr. Kelschick uh, shared before we got started, this idea of recycling manure nutrients in cropping systems is um, really an essential component to sustaining agriculture and protecting natural resources. So in order to do that, we we to promote manure in these systems, we feel like we need to understand what do different audiences understand and value as benefits from manure use in cropping systems? And then what do they view as barriers to manure use in cropping systems? And so uh, we put this survey out nationwide and promoted it nationwide. Our target audience was crop and livestock producers, and then those who advise crop and livestock farmers. So um, advisors might include extension professionals, um, private consultants, conservation and regulatory agency personnel, et cetera. Um, we had a couple partners that helped uh, promote the survey, which uh, contributed, us, contributed to us gathering uh, almost a thousand responses. And uh, those came from throughout the United States and even um, a few in Canada as well. So let's um, start and I'll share some data about what audience members um, believe they know um, about these different um, uh, impacts of manure and cropping systems. So we asked crop farmers and livestock farmers to rate their level of knowledge about these five topics along the left-hand side of the screen. And then we asked advisors to rank what they believe to be the levels of knowledge on these topics among the crop and livestock farmers with whom they interact. So in the center and on the right-hand side um, are the crop and livestock farmers uh, ratings of their own knowledge. And then on the left is what advisors uh, perceived to be the knowledge level of the farmers. So we found uh, that advisors tend to rate farmer knowledge a fair bit lower than farmers believe their knowledge to be. So as an example, um, when it came to soil physical properties, 44% um, of advisors rated farmers as very or moderately knowledgeable of how manure impacts uh, soil physical properties. But when farmers were asked that same question, crop farmers, 88% um, of crop farmers said that they were um, moderately or very knowledgeable about this topic. And 81% of livestock farmers said they were um, very or moderately knowledgeable. So there seems to be some discrepancy between what farmers um, claim to understand and what advisors perceive to be understood by farmers. Um, you know, so perhaps advisors don't give farmers enough credit for their knowledge about their soils, um, or, you know, perhaps advisors um, perceive a, a lack of knowledge on um, some of these topics among their clientele because that knowledge that they have that the clientele don't is what um, contributes to their value as an advisor. So uh, that was just an interesting um, kind of dynamic that we learned from the survey. Um, we then asked respondents to rate several um, aspects of cropping systems that may be impacted by manure use. And so again, we're looking at the same five factors along the left-hand side. Um, but now our scale is, is rating those from beneficial to harmful. So they're rating the value of manure or the impact of manure use on each of these um, system characteristics as being beneficial um, down to harmful. And so respondents largely perceived manure as being beneficial to crop fertility. 99% um, of the respondents rated manure at least slightly beneficial to crop fertility. 
the majority also viewed um, manure as being beneficial to soil physical and biological properties as well as crop yields. Where there was some variation is in how they perceived um, manure's impact on environmental quality. And so this was a little more across the board, as you can see. Um, for the most part, they were not super favorable about how manure might impact uh, the environment. And so we had to consider whether or not we'd asked the question correctly. Um, and so I went back and looked. Um, so here's the question that we posed in the survey. And I think it was written in a way that respondents understood. Um, we explained environmental quality as being um, the impact on erosion and runoff and nutrient loss to water. Um, so I think there's just a really wide spectrum of opinions on whether or not manure use can be helpful um, to environmental conditions. So thinking a little bit about that, most of our audience tended to already recognize and appreciate the agronomic and soil health benefits of manure but there seemed to be limited value. So there seems to be limited value in you know, promoting these benefits. Uh, they seem to be pretty well known, but it's, it looks like maybe we could do a better job of talking about um, the use of manure and um, implementing best management practices when manure is being used and try to um, talk about the water quality benefits that that we would expect to get when that manure is used and it's used appropriately and, and following best management practices. So that might be a direction um, that, our, that our outreach programs need to uh, consider. So one finding from the study um, is that for the most part, folks believe fertilizer and manure complement each other. So we tend to think about um, you know, those who promote manure, those who prevent fer uh, uh, promote fertilizer use and not necessarily look at the two of those being used together. But um, among the farmers and advisors uh, in the survey who use or make fertilizer recommendations regularly, um, the majority believe that manure and orga inorganic fertilizer complement each other. So I think this is, um, a positive finding. I think this uh, tells us that in our outreach programming, we don't necessarily need to be convincing farmers and advisors that these two products work together. We need probably to focus on helping them identify the fields where um, and the amounts of these two different inputs, um, the best ways to use them to achieve the desired outcomes of that production system. So we then focused on challenges that respondents believe limit the use of manure in cropping systems. And so this slide shows the top 10 challenges that were um, across all uh, audiences. So we didn't, didn't break it down here by uh, advisors or crop farmers or by location, um, geographic location or anything. Um, Transportation and application costs for manure rank number one for, for any group and, and overall as well. Um, and I think this supports what I often hear from farmers and you probably do too, that uh, whether they're selling or purchasing manure, the cost of moving it and getting it on fields is a concern to them. And um, I know uh, we heard a little bit about this topic from Thomas as well. So, um, it may not be a true, um, it may be a perception more than a truth, but, but transportation and application costs are a big concern. Odors ranked second overall. Um, interestingly, they were a lower concern to livestock producers than the other audiences that responded to the survey. Um, along the same line, um, thinking about multiple rural community concerns grouped together like odors and concerned citizens and legal challenges by neighbors, um, those were all a much greater concern among advisors than among the farmers they were advising. So uh, poor uniformity of application, um, field conditions that limit uh, application, those were identified as challenges um, by all groups, but at a higher rate for those um, respondents who were 
uh, representing the Corn Belt and the High Plains. And I think those differences are probably an artifact of weather and soil conditions or soil types um, among the different regions and also the type of manure that's most widely available in these different regions. So I listed here just a few more of the challenges that kind of um, showed up in several responses but didn't necessarily make that top 10 list. Um, accessing manure and understanding how to negotiate a fair price were mentioned by several respondents. Um, poor fit of manure application with reduced tillage practices. So the fact that we um, promote no-till systems, but we promote incorporation of manure, that's, uh, that's a, not a, um, they're not compatible in that, in that sense. Um, and then some folks think we just need to do a better job of informing the general public about manure value and safety um, so that it's uh, viewed more favorably among, uh, among consumer and, and neighbors of these operations. Lastly, we wanted to understand how um, these different groups of respondents like to receive information. What types of resources do they want to use? Um, we specifically ask about resources they use when discussing manure benefits and barriers with farmer audiences and other community members. So shown here on the left are the different um, types of uh, resources that we offered to them. And then the blue column is, is all advisors responses. The green is the farmers, um, orange is livestock. And on the right, the red is, is just educators. So educators are included in the advisors section as well, but we separated them out to show here. Um, so networks of peers ranked very high for everybody. Um, brief articles and fact sheets and recommended research articles um, were across the board, pretty popular resources for these folks. Uh, I was kind of surprised to see that um, short videos and podcasts came in pretty low for most of these groups. And I feel like in extension, we've really uh, focused efforts over the past five to 10 years on creating these very short, succinct um, pieces of information that clientele can listen to or watch in a short amount of time. And, you know, we may need to consider that we're not necessarily reaching our audiences this um, very successfully this way. So thinking about using what we've learned, um, obviously we want to use what we learned to improve our manure management related programming. So since we found that peer networks um, are a way that many of the respondents like to learn new information. Um, this idea of having farmers and advisors who have positive perceptions of manure use, help, having them help tell the story of manure's value, I think is, is definitely something to consider because they become the trusted expert since they're within that peer group um, and that they're probably received better than an expert or a researcher who's sharing the same type of information. Um, the majority of respondents, like I said, seem to already appreciate the benefits of manure from um, soil health and crop productivity perspectives. So we probably don't really need to focus on talking about why manure is great. Um, maybe our, our focus needs to be on helping these audience members use the knowledge that they already have about the value of manure to decide where in their system or on what fields they should use that manure to gain the most value um, and achieve the positive outcomes that they're looking for. So with that, um, I'll wrap up and um, I wanna recognize the partners that, um, that helped uh, develop and disseminate and fund the survey. Um, Fertilizer Institute and Certified Crop Advisors and Manure Manager and then uh, the other universities that were involved in the project. So um, I appreciate your attention and I'll turn things back over to Dr. Kelsch for questions.